few days ago in America, Lewis Hamilton won his sixth world driver's title. An accomplishment that now puts him in the conversation 100% for the greatest of all time. But how did Lewis Hamilton reach such an accomplishment in 2019? Well, in today's video, I'm going to analyse and tell the story of how Lewis Hamilton won his sixth world championship. Now, before we properly get into this video, I need to make a couple things clear before we really start the video. One, this video will not talk about how great the Mercedes car has been. If you want to see a video on that, then make sure to check out this video from a couple weeks ago about how Mercedes left Ferrari and Red Bull behind in 2019 and why the Mercedes car is the best car in 2019. And this also will not be a video comparing Lewis Hamilton to the other great drivers of all time. Again, if you want to see a video on that, I've done a video on that about a month ago comparing him to Michael Schumacher. And if you want to find out who I think is the better driver, then check that out. The link to both videos will be down below in the description. What this video is going to be about is again, telling the story of how Lewis Hamilton won the World Championship in 2019. And now, let's get into that. But we're not going to start off directly in 2019. We're going to start off at the end of 2018 and how he ended that season and how it contributed to how he started 2019. Because at the end of 2018, we saw possibly the best Lewis Hamilton we've ever seen. With some absolutely excellent performances in races where he didn't even have the best car. But considering how the first half of 2018 went, the second half of 2018 was... One of the best second half performances in a season in a world championship battle I've seen for quite a time. And it led to Lewis Hamilton of course winning at the time his fifth world championship. And he ended the season with quite an ominous statement. As he said he wanted to end the 2018 season the way he wants to start 2019 after dominating the final race of 2018 in Abu Dhabi. No one knew at the time how true these words would be. As at the first race of 2019, after pre-season testing that was not too bad for the Mercedes team, Lewis Hamilton managed to get pole position for the first race. But it wasn't an easy pole position like it was, for example, in 2018. He had his teammate Valtteri Bottas pushing him very hard for the pole position. As in the first run in Q3, Valtteri Bottas was actually half a second faster than Lewis Hamilton, but then Lewis Hamilton, in typical Hamilton style, went out and got the pole with a near-perfect final lap that was just over a tenth of a second quicker than teammate Bottas. And it was a great way to strike back against rivals Ferrari who thought they had the best car coming into the 2019 Australian Grand Prix. But the race didn't exactly go to plan for Lewis Hamilton because at the start he lost position to Valtteri Bottas and would never get first place back as his pace compared to Bottas was nowhere near as good. And it turned out after the race that Lewis Hamilton had flaw damage that caused him to be half a second a lap slower than teammate Bottas. But even if he had a healthy car and lost position to Valtteri at the start, we don't know for sure if Lewis would have won anyway. But still, second place was a good start to the season. Then at the second race in the desert of Sakir Bahrain, Mercedes were now under pressure from Ferrari. And now Lewis Hamilton had to contend with not only his teammate Valtteri Bottas, who had a good start to the season, but also Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel. And in qualifying after failing to improve his final run where he could have got onto the front row, he started the race from third behind the two Ferrari cars. And the race actually turned out to be quite a topsy-turvy affair for Lewis Hamilton. Because for one at the start, he lost position to his teammate Valtteri Bottas and dropped down to P4. Then after Valtteri made a mistake at turn one on the second lap, losing position to Charles Leclerc, Lewis Hamilton then made his way through. And then after Charles Leclerc caught and passed teammate Sebastian Vettel with Vettel's speed in that race, that was the only driver Lewis Hamilton realistically was racing. And after a tough race with Sebastian, just after the second and final round of pit stops, Lewis Hamilton finally had the chance to move into second place. And after forcing Sebastian into making a mistake at turn one, he passed him around the outside of turn four and forced Vettel to make a mistake again. And at the time, Lewis was thinking that second place was where he was going to finish. 
But then disaster struck for Ferrari as Charles Leclerc's car developed an engine problem, allowing Lewis Hamilton to catch and pass and win the Bahrain Grand Prix. It wasn't a race he deserved to win, but he had to be there to capitalise. But nonetheless, that was his first win of the 2019 season. As we then move to Shanghai, a circuit where Lewis Hamilton historically has had great success. But after qualifying, it wasn't looking too great for Hamilton compared again to teammate Valtteri Bottas as Bottas outqualified Hamilton by a very slender margin as Hamilton just couldn't get it all together to get the pole position lap in the end. But no matter because at the start of the race, he replicated what Valtteri did to him in Melbourne, he got into the lead and he dominated the race, taking win number two in 2019. But the following race in Baku was the first proper race where Lewis Hamilton realised that Valtteri Bottas was actually becoming a bit of a challenger for Lewis Hamilton, as again in qualifying Valtteri outqualified him for pole position. As both he and Valtteri outqualified Ferrari at a track where Ferrari thought they would be getting the front row lockout instead. And then we come to the start of the Baku race where Lewis Hamilton had a great opportunity to take the lead. But he failed to do so because, as he later admitted, he was too soft or too nice with Valtteri at the start. And he ensured that next time he wouldn't be so nice. He did have his chances later on to catch Valtteri Bottas and possibly overtake him to win the race. But Bottas did just about hang on with the help of a back marker for DRS to go on and win the Grand Prix. As it was now time for Lewis Hamilton to try and get on top of Valtteri when it came to qualifying. But he couldn't do it at the Spanish Grand Prix because yet again Valtteri set a very, very fast first run in Q3 and Lewis Hamilton made quite a big mistake. Giving away six tenths of a second to Valtteri Bottas and then failed to improve his final run. Meaning that Valtteri for the Spanish Grand Prix was on pole position by six tenths of a second. And this was the only moment in the season where it looked as though Lewis Hamilton had a genuine challenger for the World Championship. But then in a similar way to Shanghai at the start of the race, Lewis Hamilton once again beat Valtteri at the start and controlled the Grand Prix. In a truly dominant drive where he took his third consecutive win in Spain. And from this moment on, it was really Lewis's championship to lose. In qualifying in Monaco, again, he had a very, very tough challenge from Valtteri Bottas for pole position. But in the end, Lewis Hamilton produced a fantastic final lap to get pole position which we know at Monaco is a critical thing. And you would think after that, considering how quick he is in that car, that he dominated the Grand Prix. But you are very, very wrong. Because after the safety car came out early on in the Grand Prix, Lewis, Valtteri, Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel all pitted. With Bottas, Verstappen and Vettel going onto the white hard compound tyre and Lewis going onto the yellow medium compound tyre. And also Verstappen jumped Valtteri at the pit stops after making contact with Valtteri in the pit lane. And as it turned out, as we got into the final stages of the race, switching to the medium compound for Lewis Hamilton from the team was a clear mistake. As he was now holding up Max Verstappen in the battle for the win. But Max had a 5 second penalty, but that didn't stop Lewis Hamilton from having to defend hard against Max Verstappen passing him. And Lewis in the end had to produce one of the best defensive performances of his entire career. And one of the best defensive performances in Formula 1 history in my opinion. Because again he was on dead tyres and Max Verstappen was right up behind him for 60 plus laps. Max eventually tried to go for a move but Lewis brilliantly closed the door and went on to win the Grand Prix. People may say it's Monaco, it's hard to overtake, and that's true, but if you're going to compliment so much Ayrton Senna for defending very hard and brilliantly against Nigel Mansell in 1992, then what about Lewis Hamilton in 2019? Again, to hold Max Verstappen back, who was clearly in a faster car for that long a time, and to keep his tyres from completely destroying themselves is a great performance. And you have got to commend Lewis Hamilton for that. But after the first six races in the World Drivers Championship, Lewis Hamilton was now starting to pull away from teammate Valtteri Bottas as Verstappen, Vettel and Leclerc, drivers who were hoping to contend in 2019, were falling off very quickly. Mostly because their cars were not as good, but also because they weren't as consistent as Hamilton was in the first six races. 
But a challenge would come for Lewis Hamilton in the next race in Canada as Ferrari had the quicker car in qualifying, allowing Sebastian Vettel to put it on pole position. With Lewis Hamilton lining up in a very competitive second place. And once the first and only round of pit stops were done, Lewis then started to catch and hound Sebastian Vettel in what was setting up to be a great battle for victory in Montreal. But then the race was decided with one of the most controversial incidents of 2019 where Sebastian Vettel went off at turn 4 and ended up rejoining in, according to the FIA, an unsafe manner. Thus leading to Sebastian Vettel getting a 5 second time penalty and Lewis Hamilton winning the Grand Prix. Now even though I don't agree with the penalty being given, you still have to, in a way, praise Lewis Hamilton for what he did in this situation. Because the pressure he applied to Sebastian Vettel led to Vettel making a mistake and Vettel did crack under pressure, you cannot doubt that. So even though I don't think Lewis Hamilton at the end of the day was the best driver of that Grand Prix, he forced a mistake that led to that penalty, whether you think the penalty was right or not. And I don't think it was right, but again, you've got to praise him for applying that pressure. And similar to Bahrain, it wasn't a great win for Lewis Hamilton, but still a win nonetheless. Then at the next race in Paul Ricard, Lewis Hamilton completely dominated the weekend in his most dominant drive of 2019. As in qualifying, he adjusted to the windy conditions to outperform Valtteri Bottas and get pole position. And then in the race, he set fastest lap after fastest lap to win the Grand Prix and won it by an absolute mile. But this really was the final race where him and the Mercedes team really dominated a weekend. Because from the next race on, 2019 became quite difficult. And the difficulties began in Austria, first in qualifying where Lewis Hamilton did not have a quick enough car to get pole position despite qualifying very well in second place, but he got a grid penalty for blocking Kimi Raikkonen in what was pretty obviously blocking another driver in qualifying, meaning that Lewis Hamilton had to start the race from P4 on the medium compound tyres, but he was still looking very good for race victory considering the pace of his car and himself in the Grand Prix. And the start went mostly to plan as he passed Max Verstappen, who had a terrible start to get into P3. And then as his teammate Valtteri Bottas and leading driver Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc pitted a bit earlier than him, Mercedes decided to run Lewis Hamilton longer so he could do the overcut and fight for the victory that way, but then committed what really was the first driver error of his in the season by going too wide over the exit curbs at certain corners and breaking parts of his front wing, meaning that at his only pit stop, he had to replace his front wing, thus surrendering any hope of winning the Austrian Grand Prix. And after that, because the Mercedes car was struggling with the very, very hot temperatures in Austria, Lewis Hamilton's speed dropped off, allowing Sebastian Vettel, who was on a two-stop to try and get a podium finish, to pass him for what was P4. And Hamilton ended up finishing in P5. And this really was the first bad weekend of Hamilton's season. And that form kind of continued into his home race and into qualifying for his home race. Because it was expected that Lewis Hamilton was going to get pole position. But then in his first run of Q3, again made a critical mistake. As he went a bit too wide on the entry to Luffield and gave away a couple tenths of a second. He did go on to improve his final run, but was just too slow to get pole position from his teammate Valtteri Bottas. But as expected in the race, Lewis was clearly the faster driver and launched an attack on Valtteri early on. And in the early laps on the entry to Luffield, Lewis Hamilton passed Valtteri for the lead of his home Grand Prix. But then Valtteri responded brilliantly by passing Lewis Hamilton into the very fast and famous Cops Corner showing Hamilton that he wasn't to be beaten easily. But after Valtteri Bottas pitted for another set of the medium compound tyres, it was clear that of course Valtteri was on a two-stop strategy as Lewis Hamilton remained on track a bit longer. And then the Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi retired from the race and spun out of the race, causing a safety car. This allowed Lewis Hamilton to come into the pits, put on the hard compound tyres and come out in the lead. 
And of course, he went on eventually to win the Grand Prix. Now, you can argue he was lucky. And to a degree, Lewis Hamilton was lucky in this situation that it came out at the right time for him to pit and come out in the lead. But Valtteri Bottas wasn't a two-stop. I don't think we can absolutely say as well that Lewis Hamilton was as well. And I think Lewis honestly had the better pace in the Grand Prix. And somehow, some way, I think Lewis Hamilton would have won the Grand Prix. So for me, he deserved the win. And then he kept up that form into Mercedes' home race at Hockenheim in Germany by getting pole position. But Lewis Hamilton was not exactly well, as he was quite sick and struggling. And with the news that the German Grand Prix race would be wet, it was going to be quite a difficult race for Lewis Hamilton. The start though was pretty okay as Lewis Hamilton got away cleanly in P1 and for the first 20 to 25 laps, Lewis Hamilton was pretty comfortable in P1. But then when it dried out enough for the soft compound tyres, Lewis Hamilton came in against his own decision, it was the team's decision, for him to pit onto the dry tyres. But then as it started to rain again, he went into the wall at the final two corners and then cut across the track to come back into the pit lane and thus got a penalty for something he probably should have got a penalty for in 2018. And then had one of the longest pit stops in history, thus costing him any chance at the time to really race for the lead. And then spent the next 20 to 30 laps racing people like Alexander Alban, Kimi Raikkonen and Carlos Sainz. But Hamilton at this point was still looking good enough for maybe a podium finish. But then for Hamilton where it really went wrong was once it dried out again for dry tyres. Because one Mercedes waited too long to go onto them, meaning he dropped out of the points once he pitted finally for dry tyres. And then into turn one, after he pitted on a damp patch, he spun and slightly broke his front wing. And that completely eliminated Lewis Hamilton's chances of even hoping for a podium. And after the two Alfa Romeos got disqualified, Lewis Hamilton finished the race in P9. This would go on to be Lewis's worst race of the season so far. And qualification at the Hungarian Grand Prix wasn't that great either as he was outqualified by teammate Valtteri Bottas yet again. Again also at a track where he is quite good, Lewis Hamilton, the Hungaro ring. But also Red Bull driver Max Verstappen just about snatched pole position. If Lewis was going to win, he needed to produce his best form. And that's exactly what he did as at the start he passed Valtteri Bottas around the outside going into turn 2 and 3 and then sought after beating Max Verstappen somehow and some way. So what the team decided to do was to pit Lewis Hamilton quite a bit after Max Verstappen pitted for the first pit stop, and then Lewis Hamilton, after he pitted, was much, much faster than Max Verstappen and caught Max Verstappen, and then tried to go for the lead of the Grand Prix, but Max Verstappen put in a very, very hard defence and just about kept the Brit behind. And after Lewis Hamilton missed out on an opportunity to pass Max for the lead, it was looking a bit slim his chances to pass Max Verstappen to win the Grand Prix. So what the team decided to do was to pit Lewis Hamilton again onto fresher and softer tyres to catch Max Verstappen and pass him for the win. Lewis Hamilton was not agreeing with this decision, but he did it anyway. Thus we saw one of the best drives of Lewis Hamilton's recent career as he caught Max Verstappen and passed him by the end of the Hungarian Grand Prix and took a win that can be added to the collection of great race victories for Lewis Hamilton in a win that was also very similar to Michael Schumacher in 1998. And guys, you have got to give it to Lewis Hamilton in this situation because he had to catch Max Verstappen at about one second per lap every lap to even get back up to Max Verstappen and have a hope of passing him for the win and to be that consistently fast over that period of the race it takes some driver to do that and Lewis Hamilton is of course some driver but after that brilliant race victory in Hungary Lewis Hamilton now had a firm grip on his sixth world championship over Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen who were second and third it was now only a matter of time before Lewis Hamilton became the six-time world champion. But that didn't mean it wasn't going to be tough for Lewis Hamilton to get race victories or pole positions in the second half of 2019. Because the Mercedes car at the time around Spa once we came back from the summer break was still not the quickest like it was earlier on in 2019. 
As Ferrari, of course, at the very high-speed Spa-Francorchamps circuit, dominated qualifying and Lewis Hamilton had quite a job if he was going to somehow contend for the victory in Spa. But in typical Lewis Hamilton style, he gave it everything he had eventually after Sebastian Vettel pitted very early on and Lewis Hamilton pitted much later. Hamilton caught Vettel and passed him for second place. As Ferrari were deploying Sebastian Vettel in a way to block Hamilton from eventually catching Charles Leclerc. And by the end of the race, that's exactly what Lewis Hamilton did. But there was not enough laps left for Lewis Hamilton to pass Charles Leclerc as Leclerc got his first race win. And considering the circumstances of the weekend with Antoine Hubert's death and also how quick his car was, it was a pretty great weekend for Hamilton. And I don't think you could have asked for that much more. A week later though, in Monza, the Mercedes car actually proved to be a lot quicker than it was at Spa. And after practice, it looked as though Lewis Hamilton might be able to get a surprise pole position ahead of Ferrari who were very quick in practice as well. But a couple things really did scupper that opportunity. First off, Kimi Raikkonen crashing at the start of Q3 as Lewis Hamilton was on a quicker lap compared to Charles Leclerc. And if Kimi Raikkonen didn't crash, maybe Lewis Hamilton starts in pole position. Maybe even Mercedes have a front row lockout as Valtteri Bottas was also very quick before having to lift. But no matter, surely Lewis Hamilton in the second and final run of Q3 at Monza can try and get pole position. Well, that would be the case if this didn't happen. And this still, guys, to this day infuriates me because it was so ridiculous how this occurred. But starting second for the Italian Grand Prix was still better than what Lewis Hamilton was expecting. As he now had a great chance to give Charles Leclerc and Ferrari a fantastic run of their money if they were going to win their home race. And after again Lewis Hamilton went longer, he then started to catch Charles Leclerc after the first round of pit stops. And he got right behind him midway through the race. And this was Lewis Hamilton's chance if he was going to win the race to do it. But Charles Leclerc in a defence that was, in my opinion, too aggressive, Hamilton was forced off the track and stayed in P2. And that was his only chance, really, to win the Grand Prix. As after that, because his tyres were starting to wear out and Valtteri Bottas went even longer than Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri was starting to catch and Hamilton went off at the first chicane. And that allowed Valtteri to pass Lewis and Lewis then pitted for a fastest lap at the end of that Grand Prix. And it was to be third place, but Lewis still did, I think, the best he could in this race. But because the next race was the Singapore Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton and I think the team Mercedes were expecting to pretty much dominate the weekend. But Lewis was left confused and scratching his head after qualifying after Ferrari surprisingly got pole position. After Ferrari's big upgrades really helped. And it was yet again another race where Lewis had to fight hard if he was going to win. And at the start, he also had to fight hard just to maintain second place from Sebastian Vettel. But he did manage to do so as he then closed up to the back of Charles Leclerc. And it was really a race where Lewis Hamilton was going to win that race based on the strategy the team picked. But the team got it massively wrong, leaving Lewis Hamilton out way too long, burning up his tyres and thus losing track position to Leclerc, Vettel and Verstappen. And the team even had to tell Valtteri Bottas to drop back so Lewis Hamilton could come out ahead of Valtteri in P4 and to try and allow Lewis Hamilton to somehow get his way back onto the podium, but he couldn't do so. It wasn't the greatest weekend in Singapore for Lewis Hamilton, but you cannot deny that the team did not give him the strategy to win the race. But that was just a one-off for the great team, as in the Russian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton somehow put on the front row in qualifying, despite the Ferraris being clearly the faster car in qualifying trim. And was also going to start the race on that harder compound of tyre when the Ferrari was starting on the softer compound and Lewis was looking good. That wouldn't be the case though after the start once Sebastian Vettel jumped him and got into the lead. And for the first 15 laps Ferrari relentlessly pulled away and looked as though they were going to completely dominate the Russian Grand Prix. But after the first round of pit stops for Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel in typical Ferrari fashion, things went wrong. As Sebastian Vettel's car failed, causing a virtual safety car. 
and that allowed Lewis Hamilton to pit on the medium tyres to the soft compound tyres and come out ahead of Charles Leclerc. And then the crash of George Russell caused a full safety car, meaning that Valtteri Bottas then got into second place after Charles Leclerc pitted under the safety car. And once the safety car was released, his teammate Valtteri Bottas did a brilliant number two job to hold back Charles Leclerc and allow Lewis Hamilton to win the Russian Grand Prix. Now, was this win lucky? Of course it was. But again, you've got to be there to capitalise when these things happen, and Lewis Hamilton always is. And that's why you can never count out the now six-time world champion. But then as we headed back to Asia for the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix, a weekend that was really affected by a super typhoon, Hamilton was coming up to the point of winning the world championship, but at Suzuka, he couldn't quite do it as of yet as Valtteri Bottas was still hanging in there to keep him from winning it so early on. And qualifying at Suzuka didn't exactly go swimmingly for Lewis Hamilton as he was outqualified by teammate Bottas in 3rd and 4th place with the two Silver Arrow cars. And because of the speed of the Ferraris in qualifying, I'm sure he was anticipating a tough Grand Prix. And it was quite an eventful one for Lewis Hamilton at the start. He was passed by Max Verstappen, but then Verstappen was took out by Charles Leclerc. And then debris flew off Charles Leclerc's front wing, almost injuring, if not almost killing Lewis Hamilton in the process. I still can't believe this was allowed to happen. But after Charles Leclerc pitted for that new front wing, Leclerc was no longer of Hamilton's interest in the Grand Prix. And because his teammate Valtteri Bottas was so far up the road and Lewis was not able to have enough speed to win the Grand Prix, Lewis had to fight Vettel for second place. To try and complete the 1-2 and to absolutely confirm the Constructors World Championship for his great team. He tried to pass Vettel but because of the Ferrari's prodigious straight line speed he just couldn't do it. But because he got the fastest lap point that is what clinched the World Constructors title for the Silver Arrows Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton was frustrated that he wasn't kept out on a one stop race to try and fight for victory but at the end of the day his teammate was playing quicker. But after that race, it was all about the team and celebrating yet another world title. And as we came to, the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix was the first Grand Prix of the season where Lewis Hamilton could wrap up the world championship. But it was still not going to be easy as the Mercedes car was not performing well after Mexican Grand Prix qualifying. As Lewis Hamilton qualified in P4 and Valtteri Bottas qualified in 6th place despite crashing out. And it was going to take some drive for Lewis Hamilton to win the race, never mind win the World Championship. And his race was almost ended at the start, first by Sebastian Vettel almost pushing him onto the grass. And then Max Verstappen and him got very close at turn 1 and 2. Both went off the track, but Lewis Hamilton just about survived despite the damaged floor. But then as Charles Leclerc pitted to go onto another set of medium tyres, he was committing then to a two-stop strategy. Mercedes saw this and then put Lewis Hamilton on the hard compound tyre to try and go to the very end of the Grand Prix. And because Ferrari made yet another mistake, keeping Sebastian Vettel out for way too long, that allowed Lewis Hamilton to take the lead. But it was not at all an easy drive to the end of the race because he had floor damage and he did not have good tyres in terms of tyre wear and was barely hanging on to his car to the end of the race to win the Mexican Grand Prix in what was another brilliantly managed drive from Lewis Hamilton. And it's just another example of how great Lewis Hamilton is and why he is so celebrated. Because most other drivers would not have won that race considering the damage they had to their car and the tyres. But still, he got it done. But when we came to the United States Grand Prix again, he could win the World Championship. But it was not again going to be an easy race after qualifying in only P5. But he only needed P8 to win his sixth World Drivers Championship. But as we know of Lewis Hamilton, he likes to do it in style. So he did it in style. First off at the start, he passed both Ferraris on the first lap to get into third place. Then sought after catching Max Verstappen and after Verstappen committed himself to a two-stop race, Lewis Hamilton was put on a one-stop race. Something he wanted to do at Suzuka but now he was on. After Valtteri and Max pitted for a second time, he did very well to be as close to his teammate at the end as he was and Valtteri only passed him with about three or four laps to go. 
and ended up just about hanging on to second place in that Grand Prix as Lewis Hamilton went on in the United States Grand Prix of 2019 to win his sixth World Drivers title in what was yet another great drive from Lewis Hamilton in 2019. And at the time of recording between the 2019 US Grand Prix and the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix, these are the stats of Lewis Hamilton's 2019 title season. He becomes of course a six-time World Drivers Champion. He's had 10 race wins, 4 pole positions and 16 podiums. And the race wins and podiums have really been the key for Lewis Hamilton statistically in winning the World Championship. And again at time of recording is currently sitting on 83 race wins, 87 pole positions and 150 podium finishes. But how great has Lewis Hamilton been in 2019? Well, I don't think Lewis Hamilton has been at his best in 2019. I'd still say 2018 was his best season because he was competing against a four-time world champion, who of course is better than Valtteri Bottas, his teammate. And I think the Ferrari car was, most of the season, just as fast in 2018, if not slightly faster. And there were races where Lewis had to be at an all-time great level just to be racing for victory, such as Monza and Singapore. Again, there has been races this season, such as Monaco, Hungary, Mexico, where he has been absolutely fantastic. And in a couple of those races, has been at an all-time great level. But I just don't think it's been as good as 2018. Still pretty close, though. But why has Lewis Hamilton won the championship in 2019? Well, it's been because of his brilliant race performances and of how consistent he has been. Again, he has had 16 podiums in 19 races. Yes, he does have the best car in Formula 1 right now and has in 2019, but you have to admire the consistency. And most of those podiums are him in either first or second place, not just languishing in a very low and comfortable third place. The only weakness really of Lewis Hamilton's this season, which has been quite surprising actually, is qualifying because in qualifying, he's only had four pole positions, which is quite rare for him considering how quick his car has been. And compared to Valtteri Bottas, even though he has been better in qualifying, it hasn't been as good as say we expect it to be. And there has been quite a few afternoons in qualifying where he hasn't got it together enough or he has made a big mistake that's led to him not qualifying in the position he should. But then in the race, as we saw perfectly in the United States Grand Prix, he made up for that and got a great result. And that is really why Lewis Hamilton has won the 2019 World Championship. And again, we cannot deny how great the car has been. But as I've said before, he still had to be in there consistently which his teammate Valtteri Bottas, who has had a great season, has not always been there. And actually, this season, it hasn't been the Mercedes car as dominant as people may expect, considering how many races they've won. And there were even races Lewis Hamilton won where he didn't have the best car, such as Monaco, maybe even Hungary as well. You could absolutely argue that. And I would probably say Mexico as well, where again, he didn't have the best car, and his car was not in great condition, but still won the race. And that is the hallmark of a great driver. Drivers who are able to win a race in cars that are probably not deserving of doing so that particular weekend. And now that he's a six-time world champion, of course, he can now next season in 2020 equal Michael Schumacher for seven world championships. Now, I will have a video coming out in the season previews for 2020 in probably January, previewing whether Lewis Hamilton can yet again win the World Championship. But he's looking very good, isn't he, for beating Michael Schumacher's record. And this time next year, we might be having that conversation as to whether Lewis Hamilton is the GOAT. Again, I'm not going to get into it now whether he is or whether he will be or whether he is better than Michael Schumacher. Again, quick plug, if you want to see whether I think he's better than Michael Schumacher, check out this video. But I cannot deny that he's absolutely on the right road to become the greatest of all time if he does indeed become that. Not just from an opinion perspective, but from a statistical point of view as well. But as I've said before, since the US Grand Prix has finished, congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for winning the sixth World Drivers title. 
And hopefully in 2020, if Red Bull and Ferrari do improve, allowing Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen to be up there on a more regular basis, not in the races, but also in the World Championship, let's hope Lewis Hamilton maintains this level to see some great battles in 2020. But guys, that's been me telling the story of Lewis Hamilton's sixth World Championship victory. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of this video and... What were the keys for you for Lewis Hamilton becoming the world champion this season? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. My next video should be about me previewing the lineups, the driver lineups for 2021 and who I think will be contending for what seats for that season. So don't forget to subscribe for that video coming out. And also don't forget to smash the like button. But until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.